Yeah. So, so the key thing for us to always remember is where we put our focus. So before we, um, yeah, great to have you on the call. Which David is that? Oh, cool. Cool. Nice to have you on David. Yeah. It's really important where we put our focus. And this week before I start on our, our content, you know, I want to talk a little bit about your focus because a lot of times we can be putting our focus on what we don't have or what hasn't showed up or what's not working. And the truth is, is we want to put our focus on what we're creating and creation happens inside before it happens outside. And that sometimes can be a, a tough thing. And, and it's something to continually be mastering, isn't it? Is, okay, where am I putting my focus? Where am I putting my focus? Where have I been putting my focus? Oh, that's awesome. Could have been a really hard week, but with the shift I'm feeling, I focus on staying in my vibration, allowing the outside forces to bring me down. Fantastic. Well done. And, and that's because that's part of it. It's part of it is getting in here. And it's, it's interesting because today's going to be a really important day. You know, there's a big full moon out there if no one... Um, has noticed, has anyone noticed that massive moon out there today? And that brings different energies uh, to the planet. And so, so it is, it, there's always interesting energies. I first saw the interesting energies of the moon and what it does to us when I was working in hospitality and bars and nightclubs and stuff like that. And uh, I would notice that people were just crazy when the, when the moon's there. So it, it does make a difference. It does change us. It does do that. So, you know, today we're going to be talking about relationships and Specifically, we're going to be talking about relationships with money and, and how that works. So I think I've, I've finished most of my little preamble right now. And so I want to start off with, with understanding and us doing a little bit of a structure uh, and understanding our own structure around money. So I'd love you just to get a pen and paper and let's just, let's just get into this and let's look at this. The question that I have for you is... What is your ideal situation when it comes to your finances? And I just want you to think about that question. What is my ideal situation? And maybe just close your eyes before answering it. And when you think you've got it, I just want you to, to type in the ideal situation. because I think it's very important. We're gonna be doing um, the perceptual shift pattern today and other things, but just, just feel into it right. And what's my ideal situation when it comes to my finances, when it comes to my money? How much do you make? How much time do you put in? What do you do? More than enough to do all I want to do. Cool, and so how much is that? How much is that specifically? I'm abundant, I can do whatever I want. Nice. And so how much, how much? So here's the next question for those of you who have written this in or typed it down, whatever you've done, why? Why do you want that? Why? Why do you want that? And, and just, you know, just answer the question. You can probably sense that you're going to not answer it the right way because I'm going to catch something. And I know. But why? Just why? Why? Why do you want that? So why do you want that? Hmm. Perfect. Because this will give me even more freedom than I have now. And because I just want to without any justification. Perfect. I want that because the 
the procession of massive global healing will be exponential. To feel free because I can. So the first, the first thing we have to, yeah, the first, the, there's only one correct answer to this. Uh, the questions were, um, what is your ideal financial situation? And then we closed our eyes, we went into that, and then I said, why? There's actually, there's actually only one correct answer. And that one correct answer is because that's what I want, because that's what I choose to. And it's good. We got we got one one correct answer. One one. And why do I say it's correct? Not because I'm trying to be critical, but because every other answer isn't just going for the goal. Does that make sense? It isn't just going for the thing. It's trying to have the thing for some other purpose, which isn't the thing. And what this actually says is you don't, the thing isn't enough. It, it has to have more than that. And so, so, and, and by the way, this was, this is what always used to happen to me is I always used to ha have this. So I want to make a million dollars and I wasn't okay just to say I want a million dollars because I want it. It was, and notice what you wrote. If you're the type of person that wrote in, uh, I want to make the money. And then I said, well, why? And you said, oh, because I'm going to help all these other people. Or I want to make because I want to be free because I want to do this. Just notice what's inherent in that answer. Does that make sense? Can you see that? So, you know, I won't put anyone's names onto this. So I want to help others who can't help themselves. Um, I want there to be a massive global healing to feel free. You see? And so to create other, to, uh, to do other things. And so it's, a, it's an important situation for us to really understand this, this idea called negative goal setting, okay? And negative goal setting is a structure where the goal you think you have is naturally the goal. You think that the goal's the, the million, but the goal is to, to, to do this or to do that. It's not just a pure goal. A pure goal is I want to, win the Olympics because I want to win the Olympics. A negative goal is I need to prove this person that I'm right, so I'm gonna go do it. Now, can you feel the, the different energies between those two? I just wanna win it because I wanna win. I play to win versus I've gotta prove this person right. Which one's actually gonna feel good? Which one's actually gonna feel good? One, they might both still win it, right? But one wins, it goes, yeah, I did the thing that I wanted to do, awesome, and my life continues, it carries on. Whereas the other goes, I'm going to win this to prove them right. They get there and they go, ha, ha, ha. And they realize that the other person didn't really care. Or I'm going to go win this to make you feel good, dad. Or, I'm going to win this to, to show that I'm good enough in the world. And so they get the thing. And the truth is, is that when they, they arrive, they arrive at this thing. They, they are unable to actually, uh, you know, they're, they're unable to even enjoy it. And so they miss the journey because the whole journey is focused on this external outside thing. And so, so it's very interesting um, what comes up with those, those questions. And so, so let's go into it again and, and let's, let's ask the question and, and really sink into it this time. Okay, we're gonna really just ask, what is our ideal situation just for us, just because, and notice before we do it, just notice how hard it is just to, just to go, what do I actually desire? Not I want to make the million because society says a million is some substantial number or this or that. What is your true ideal average situation, ideal average day? What is that true situation for you that just feels so, so, so good? Okay. And so I want you just for a second, if it's okay, just to peel away any other expectations or any other things and then let's just close our eyes and ask the question, what is my perfect financial situation? What just feels so good?
And then just type in what you get. Just type in what you get. You know, mine, mine's always been about $500,000 personal income doing what I love, loving every single day. That's been mine for a very long time. Why? Because it feels good. Hmm. And it's such a good thing to do this with every goal, you know, whether it's, it's dating or uh, health or whatever. Like, why do we want that? You know, if you're trying to get the body that you desire because you're trying to prove to others, if you're trying to do this, if you're trying to do that, you, you're not actually setting the goal in the right place. Yeah, good. I like it. I like what's coming through now. And so can everyone feel the difference between what came through the second time when they just said, what do I just desire? Just because, no reason. Hmm. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. And so that shifts an important shift whenever you're setting goals. In fact, the number one mistake that is made when, when, um, when trying to, to manage, uh, here's the link here. Oh, how do I send you guys a link over on? It's the same link every week, guys. You should just save the link. The link doesn't change. Yeah, it's a great clarification because you will never manifest something that isn't just it. If it's always, I need this for something else or this, there's something else at play. And, and it's, it's interesting. It's really interesting. So we're going to, we're going to do an exercise to work on our relationship with money. So we're going to have some fun with this and we've, we've already started shifting and, and, and having a, an experience. So what we're going to do in a second is, uh, is we're going to close our eyes and I want you just to imagine that you're sitting down at a meeting with money. Okay. And I'm going to ask you some questions about this meeting, like you're at a coffee date with money and then I'm going to get you to type it in. Okay. So close your eyes and I just want you to imagine that you're sitting uh, at your desk, at your chair, at your table, wherever you're sitting, but across from you, you're having a meeting with money. The first thing I want you to notice is what's money's image like. Then I'd like to just have you consider how do you feel sitting across from money? What is your goal for money? What, what do you want from it? What beliefs do you have? Cool. When you've got those, just type in some of your answers. What are your goals around money? What are your, um, what are your beliefs? And type, type them in. Let me know. Open your eyes and type them in. It's always interesting to see, you know, what money showed up as. Was it an image of someone, something? Hmm. Fat man, bit awkward, uncomfortable. That's interesting. <laughs> To collaborate with it, to work with it as a team. Gold bullion Michelin man. <laughs> nice. Or Michigan man. <laughs> I don't know. Money wants to have fun. Nice. 
I felt excited. Good. So how did you feel? What did you believe? A big pile of money out of my reach. Nice. Happy. Good. To have more than enough to be able to do what I wish. Kiyosaki, wealth and knowledge. Nice. So just what else? What else? Maybe go back into it. Experience it again. What did you notice when you were sitting across from, from money? Like what was, you know, what was it all about? Hmm. Belief money is a little bit adversarial. No, not hostile, but distant. Hmm. Yeah, cool. Interesting. Interesting to see your relationship with it in awe of its presence. Nice. To get more of it, I can always get more. Challenge, celebrated. Cool. Cool. Partners. We felt like partners. That's a good one. Awesome. Okay, so so this time we're going to we're going to do something interesting. We're going to go into going to go into money in that same experience sitting next to you. Okay, so you ready? So go ahead and close your eyes and float into money's body sitting down next to you, and just breathe in through money for a second and look back at you. You know what you look at. So what's it like being money? sitting across from you. How does it feel? To be money sitting across from you, just notice it. What is it? What are the beliefs that money has about you? What is money's goal with you in mind? And when you've got it, you can open your eyes and you can type it in. What was it like to be money? You worry about me too much. I'm here. <laughs> Hello, I'm right here. That's interesting. That's what money said. What was it like to be money? Type it in. What did money want for you? How did it feel to be money? Just wants to give to me abundantly. Nice. I'm here, I'm yours, you deserve me. Good. Money said, really? Is that all you got? We've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> cool. See, it, it's interesting because the, the way that we relate to money, we've created it into something. I want to just help and give more feeling rejected. Yeah, cool. Very cool. Because money's just a partner in, in life. It's just a... It's, a, it's an asset to you to help you do whatever it is you want, but it doesn't have a conscience. It doesn't care if you do good or do bad. It just, it's, just, it's just there. It's interesting. It's interesting that it, it knows about vibration. Hmm. <laughs> You've got some smart money there. Cool. It is. Money is a measurement. Money is a measurement. Yeah, nice. It is. It's just, it's a measurement. Measurement of, of value. It's a measurement of what other people have done to create value it's just a measurement it's a beautiful measurement but we create it into something else that makes sense what you're feeling into is your creation of it some of you think that it cares about your vibration 
my one mine doesn't Mine just gives me mine money gives to Donald Trump no matter what his vibration is. And so, but we all create our own thing. Some of you think that it it's got a limit or it wants it. Some people think that money will only do good things for you. It's it's just it's just not true. It's just a it's just a thing. It's just a thing. It's just a measurement. It's like a centimeter. A centimeter measures ground. Uh, a mile measures ground, a kilo measures weight, money measures value exchanged. That's it. It's a measurement. It measures value rendered to, to a human being, another human being that's wanting to pay for it. So it's just a measurement. I know. <laughs> I can see belief systems getting battered as I say that. <laughs> you don't have to believe me. Cool. So what we want to do is we want to, we want to heal this relationship. Okay, we want to heal this relationship because we want these two to come together even more, don't we? We want we want them to both be able to really have a great relationship. So I want you now, we're going to close our eyes and this time we're going to go into it. Okay. This time when we go into it, we're going to we're gonna play, we're gonna play like a relationship council. Okay. So we're going to kind of sit on the other side and it's kind of, you know, like if you've ever seen on a movie when, when a couple goes to like a wedding counselor or relationship therapy and they're like, look, you, you want to do all these amazing things in life and you, you just want to help you do all these amazing things in life. Can you guys just both realize you want the same thing and just get along? Can you, what do you need to know about? And you see, and they do So we're going to do that with money. Is that right? Okay. We're going to, we're going to have a, you're going to have your own relationship counseling session with money. Sound good? Because I think a lot of us just need to get along better with money. <laughs> I, I'll guide you. I'll guide you. So close your eyes and I want you to go and sit down, you know, with these two different energies, these two things. On one side of you, there's money. And I just want you just to notice what money wants, what it desires, what it is. Mm. And then on the other side, there's this beautiful human being, this amazing consciousness who, who has all these dreams and wishes and desires. And as you sit there, I just want you to absorb everything that you know about these two already, what it is they both desire. What is it that they both want? Hmm. And I want you to turn to the person and, and I want you to, to ask and, and look at it and say, do you really, truly desire to have some help with your life? Would you like to have a partner that just wants to help you with all your goals? Do you want a partner? And talk to the human in this situation. Do you want a partner that just wants to help you with everything that you want to do? It's just like a super energetic puppy that just wants to be there helping you no matter what you want to do wants to help you do you want that and just notice the answer and and this thing will just it will just keep giving to you as long as you understand a few of the laws do you want that notice what this person needs to let go coach them through it what is it they need what are some of the beliefs that they need to let go of What are some of the stories they need to put down? What are some of the excuses and dogmas and silly sayings they need to forget? Can you feel that? Notice that it's shifting already for this human. And now let's shift our attention across to this, 
this money thing. And let's really look at it. What is it really? What is it really? Well, first off, where does it come from? Hmm, that's an interesting question as the doctor. Where does it come from? Notice that the only way that money is created is by giving another human being what that human being desires to pay for. And notice that money just measures how much one human being gives to another human being what they desire to pay for. Just notice that there's a literal law of how much this is there. Just notice that. Mm. And as soon as you notice that to be true, that this literally just gets as big as you want it compared to how many people of this other person is going to. And actually, let's report that back to the human being. I want you to say to the human being, excuse me, miss, mister, or excuse me, miss. You can have as much of this as you desire. It's just measuring how many people you give what they want to pay for. That's all it's measuring. You must give people what they want to pay for and, uh, and give it lots of it. Mm. And just really, really tell this human, tell this person, tell this you. Share with them, share with them this truth. Money's as abundant as there are human beings who have problems. Money is as abundant as there are human beings that have desires. Because money is just measuring. <laughs> it's just measuring the value given. And just send that energy to this human till it finally understands what this thing is. Let it realize that if someone makes money on property, it's because a lot of people wanted the property. If someone makes money on stocks, it's because they invested in businesses that other people wanted. Notice that if some people, that some people make money because they are able to lend money to others and charge an interest on that. And people want the money. It's all of value. Notice that there's a product. There's a, notice that even people who work in a job are giving their employer what that employer wanted. Let this person feel that money is as abundant as there are humans who have desires and humans who have problems. And that's pretty abundant, isn't it? And now let's go back, assuming that the human being is starting to realize this, and let's, let's figure out. Let's look at money. Does, does this energy, does it have any evilness to it? Does it have anything evil about it? Let's look at it. Is there anything evil about this thing here? Hmm. No, it's, there, there can't be. There's nothing evil, is there? It's not evil. Look at it. It's just measuring a value exchange. Then, then how is it true that this thing has been blamed for so much bad? Hmm. It just wants to flow. It just flows to where there's value. But some people haven't had enough of it. But it's not the money's fault. The reason why they haven't had enough of it is they haven't found ways to add value to other human beings. Some people with a lot of it have gone and done some silly things. Oh, there's that. Sometimes... Sometimes money flows to people who lie. Oh, can you see that there? Look at that. Sometimes money flows to dishonest people. Mm. 
And just notice that money doesn't have a consciousness. It wasn't money that flowed to dishonest people. There were two sides to that, wasn't there? There was one side where there's a dishonest person. And then there's another side of a person not doing their real due diligence. Mm, was it really money's fault? Was it really this beautiful energy, this beautiful measurement? Was it really money's fault? Just consider that. Was it really, or was it these two other, was that a human error? Hmm. Seems a little bit silly to be blaming money for it when money's just this weird energy, isn't it? And so take that knowledge and report it back to the human being and, and, and really just say to the human being, actually, this thing doesn't create any negativity. It's that's just, there's those humans just that they're doing silly things, believing people they shouldn't believe. Making up stories. Hmm. And so as you're here being the counselor, looking at these two, I want you to notice whether or not they're willing to be friends yet. And really the money's always wanted to be friends with the human being, but how's this human being relationship shifting towards the money? I want you to go ahead and I want you to see them coming together. See, see them, you know, shaking hands, holding hands, having a hug. Just picture that human and then go ahead and step into that human being again. Take all that wisdom, step back into your body. And I want you to look across at money now. You may notice that it's there or you may just notice it is you. But how does it feel to be sitting with money? And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and you can report back. How was that? How was that? Hey, Hannah. Good to see you on. Hey, Jordan. So you just jumped on. Feels good. Good, good, good. That was so awesome. I felt an energetic shift in my body when I became one at the end. Yeah. I love having money to be there to support me all the time. Nice. Very good. It's just natural. Love giving money as neut neutrality back. Beautiful. That's great. Great one. It is neutral. It's, it's like, I want you just to remember that money is like a kg. It's like a mile. It's like a pound. It's like a dollar. I was going to say it's like a dollar because <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's, it's just a measurement of, of that. Who likes that? To really understand that to be re-given a lot of money, it's really just by giving a lot. Money is re-given by human beings. Isn't that a truth? Money is re-given by human beings, but you have to give a solution. You have to give them something that they desire, and then it's re-given. And then you give it maybe to a bank or you give it to, uh, to buy a property and they give it to another human being who desired it. And that's the cons, that's you got to understand. But I want some more feedback. I haven't heard from all of you. It's completely give, give. It's completely win, win. There's no, there's no other situation here. Because money is a human measurement that we use. Doesn't do bad things. You have to give a solution to get given back. It's a flow that doesn't stop. Beautiful, David. Yeah. You've got to give a solution and then give a solution, then give a solution, and then you get given back. And so... Let's look at all the people that are able to receive a lot of money. Let's talk about Zuckerberg, Facebook. He gave us this huge platform 
to connect on and for all these advertisers to advertise on. He gave that to the world. Well, the people that inherit it, they didn't create it. It was whoever created it at the beginning. True. Someone had to give to create it. And so you think about Jeff Bezos, right? He had to give Amazon to the world, a way for us to buy all these things. Oprah gives. You know, J.K. Rowling, she gives. They gave, she gave Harry Potter. In order to be given back, there's a key. You must create and give to humans and, and something they desire to pay for. Isn't that good to feel that? And, and I, I hope that all of you are hearing that, I, that it, it actually, money doesn't actually care about your vibration. Otherwise, people who trade guns and people who do bad stuff, they, wouldn't, they actually wouldn't have any of it. Now, manifestation requires your, the right vibration. But they wouldn't. They they don't have to. You don't you don't have to have it to attract money. Money's actually a mechanism that that moves towards flow. Yeah. Does that make sense to those of you who have heard that said before in other places? And but I do believe in high vibe. I just don't believe that money is the mechanism that flows to high vibe. Does that make sense? Because I just want to make sure that I'm I'm saying yes to high vibe, but also that money 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 flows in a different way but high vibe is everything you've got to be high vibe like why would you miss the opportunity to be high vibe um I, and so i just want everyone to get it because because i've thought about this for years <laughs> and i and i've had so much so many different you know people and situations and scenarios talk about all sorts of things you will attract whatever vibe you're on so that's crucial but it does not matter about money money doesn't Money can't have a conscience. It's a freaking measurement. It's like, you know, so if you ever hear someone tell you that money's an energy or money has a conscience, just go, oh, yeah, like a centimeter has a conscience. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like a, like a kilogram has a conscience, you know, it, it doesn't make sense, <laughs> you know, be like, oh, it does it. You know, is it an energy? Oh, you know, yeah, right. Cool. Got it. Like a, like a kilogram. Yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah that's funny david but i think everyone gets it see david says it depends what the kilo is right because it's measuring something else right <laughs> it's not the measurement anyway i'm having fun having fun just because i see that out there and i don't think that it's well thought through i don't think the person who says that has really thought it through so so this is what i really wanted you to get from the perceptual shift is that when it comes to money, our relationship is, is super important. It, it's super important that we understand this. We understand what it is and we understand the truth behind things. The truth will set you free.